Hi fellow engineers, so today we're going to have a look at actually creating paths for the Geneva Wheel and Maltese Cross in this tutorial. So what we're going to need to do is divide this model up onto one. I'm going to be using a CNC machine, not a 3D printer. So I don't have access to a 3D printer. Uh, so to do what I want to do is I can actually simplify what I have on screen and actually place the individual parts on a block of wood or a block of stock that I can actually machine these out of. So I'm going to have to actually <laughs> we've put this all together to actually do the animation in previous videos. Now I'm going to break it all apart again to actually uh, allow this to be machined. So I am going to first of all remove the axis wheels, uh, sorry the axis points because I don't need those anymore so uh, if I click on that one, let's get rid of that and the pinwheel axis, let's get rid of that and also I don't need this part either so I want to remove that as well so if I jump into I can either jump into my embedded actually thinking about that I don't need my embedded because I've got these up here so I'm going to get rid of the embedded as well. So now we've got our original uh, embedded and lock wheel compound that we might create before. I'm going to get rid of these as well and all I want to be left with are these two my original um, objects that I created, my original bodies. So I'm going to get rid of that as well. And a lock wheel pin, don't need that one. Pin wheel compound, don't need that. Don't need wherever that is. And I don't need my guide either. Yes, get rid of that. And all these cross compound, I'm going to get rid of that as well. So now I'm going to just make these visible. Toggle visibility. Um, ooh, hello. What's happened there? Am I going a bit overzealous with all the stuff that I got rid of there? Uh, oh, it's just that that, that the pad is invisible, so I'm going to toggle visibility on that. At the moment, I'm in the path workbench, but it's best to be off in the part design. Uh, sorry, the part workbench in the design. You can't toggle the visibilities in here, so I'm just going to jump into the part because this is where you probably will start from. So all those are now visible now I want to make some separation in this so I can actually tool these out so to do that I'm going to have to make compound objects of all these so I can actually move them because at the moment if I double click on them I can't actually move them maybe double clicking wasn't a good idea at the moment, no there we go there we go so that's see we're only editing the body so I can't actually move those at the moment so at the moment by double clicking we make these bodies active so that's a good thing so this is what we want to do either double click or right click and we can toggle the active body so I'm going to deal with the lock wheel first so let's double click the lock wheel so I've made that active and I'm going to make a compound object out of that so I'm going to jump up into my part workbench not part design I'm going to go to uh, which one is it? Part and compound and make compound body. So I've made that into a compound body now. So I now can double click the compound body and actually move that. I'm not worried about the orientation, I just need to move that out of the way. So I'm just going to move it just, just out of the way of the actual. Um, main pinwheel here so a lock wheel move because I, I want to be able to get in here I, I may have to measure these to make sure my tool can actually get in there I'm just pressing shift to move this around on the screen and pressing alt to have a look at what we're doing just click top okay so I've left a bit of space there so my my uh, machine bit can actually get in here so that's all okay. Um, I'm now going to do the same with the Geneva wheel. 
So I double click Geneva wheel to make it active, which it probably already is. I've, by now, I've jumped, double clicking on Geneva wheel, I've gone into my part design, which I didn't really want to do. So let's jump back to the part. So Geneva wheel's active. Go to part, go to, down to compound, and make compound. So now we've got our compound 001 that's just come up. Let's just rename this. So this is more, oops, Maltese cross compound. So we've now got our Maltese cross compound object. So if I double click on that, I can move this now over to about here. You can rearrange these shapes to get more efficient use of your material um, by just using the by clicking on the actual object itself. Let's zoom out a bit. So let's click on the fit all the contents of the window. It's a bit too much. Let's just zoom in a bit more. There we go. So we can make more efficient use of the material by clicking, say, on the Maltese cross and going into our placement and changing the angle. So this allows us to put a more a better angle so then I can actually go in and double click and change the position. But when you've remember when you change the angle our position mark uh, position handler or our axis handler then we've got a bit of an issue with the actual placement. So you can either try to place it like this or easier way is to actually use the position down here I'll open this out <coughs> and use the X and Y to actually move it closer to the body that you want to position it near to so I'm going to position that one there and I'm going to bring this down actually a tad bring it down to the bottom uh, I was going to move this one over to the top here, but I'm not quite sure anymore. Um, let's move this. Okay, I'll keep it there. I'll keep it there for, just for demonstration purposes. There we go. So, once you've positioned your objects correctly, your compound objects. Um, oh, this one's not compound. The pinwheel's not compound, so I'm just going to do part compound, make compound. So that's our lock wheel there. Let's just rename these lock wheel compound and rename that one. Pinwheel compound. So we now have these all, I would say, in the position I would want to actually cut these on, our, on the stock. So, how do we cut these onto our stock? Well, we need to jump into the path workbench. This allows us to create paths for cutting around our stock. So now we're in our path workbench. I can actually create a job, job, um, create a path job object by clicking on this icon here. I could also go up to path and click on job in here, and then we create a job from from here. So I want to select the items that I want in the job. So this is where I rename them. So it's easy to rename. So I've renamed all the compound objects, I want to select all of my compound objects in here and there is no template so we don't worry about the template don't need a template around this so hit OK and what's happened is actually produ it's produced a piece of stock that is the um, needed size to contain our free compound objects so that's all good so I can I press Alt. I can actually show the, show what the stock looks like. 
So I've moved this about to our front view. And we can see those all lined up nicely on our piece of stock. Now to start, we will need a, because I'm doing this on a CNC machine, I need to actually create a tool in there if I haven't already got one. So on this job edit that's come up, I can go to tools and I've got the default tool in there. What I'm going to do is edit that default tool and remove it. No, nope, no, nope, that's okay. So that's okay. So we've got our default tool in there. We can actually add one in there, and that's where I'm going to go from. In, from I'm going to add a tool in there. So this is where I want it to be. So click add. And I'm just going to remove my default tool by clicking on it, deleting that out. And I'm going to put a new, new tool in there, and I'm going to call this a What bit am I going to use? The bit I'm going to use is going to be five millimeters in in width. Let's just say that five millimeters uh, diameter cutting bit. So if we look down here, I'm going to use, be using an end mill to actually machine this out of. Obviously, with your machine, you'll have to set this up per se for the tools and machine you're using. So I'm just going to call this five mill end mill that's going to be an end mill material carbide I'm going to leave that as is length offset I'm going to leave as it as it is as well and this is important so this is the diameter of your bit which is five millimeter and the height of the cutting edge now the height of the cutting edge will determine the amount of step downs we have through our our cut our when we're contouring or facing an object then each time it will step down and we want to use the maximum um, cutting edge that we will actually machine from the object the amount of material that we're machining again depending on the machine this will differ because obviously the more cutting edge we use the more friction we're creating on our piece and depending how how much torque our machine has then it de depends how much of the cutting edge we can use but for this demonstration I'm going to use the full cutting edge I'm going to create a video of my CNC machine which I've built from scratch and how I've set that up um, I still need to do some work on that CNC machine so that'll be a good kick out the backside for me to actually finish that work so I'll do a video on that one for you to actually show how to do this so for the time being the height I'm going to go for a let's see five millimeter hmm yeah I'm going to go for a height of 10 mil so I've got 10 millimeters of depth to cut of, of um, sorry, of 10 millimeters of um, actual depth that I can cut that could be used. So that's okay. That I'll show you how these are affected on the actual uh, machine in in a moment. So we'll come back to this. So I'm just going to go for, okay for that for the actual tool itself. So our tool's in there. It all set up. Okay, that. And I'm just going to click on the marker so we can actually use this tool and OK and oh didn't actually add Let's click add click on there and hit create sorry hit create tool controls and that's added it to our to our tool list there click OK on that and I'm just going to click on the default tool there and hit remove sure removed in the didn't display there hmm anyway so we've got our tool in we have our default values here which is rapid speeds I'm not going to get into rapid speeds at the moment because 
we don't need that for our simulation we need this for cutting and I'll do cover that in another video um, again for the output um, I would use uh, Gerbil or GRBL in here but I'm not going to do that for the time being I'm just going to show you how to simulate a cut I'm not going to worry about all op defaults and I'm not going to worry about the general here that's all ok so if I hit ok it's created our job here I can drill into the job and there's our 5mm end, end piece and if I click on the 5mm end piece end mill we've got our horizontal rapid and vertical rapid so this is the the rapid speeds above the piece in the safe area that is going to move I'm not going to get into this again or the horizontal feet or vertical speed at the moment because this is all to do with setting up your CNC machine or whatever milling machine you're using and I'll cover that in another video because these are will differ on your the machine that you are using all I'm worried about with this video is the operations to actually cut these so how do we cut these so we've got a number of tools up here we've got our to create the different paths and these are the ones I'm going to be using so to create a cut I'm going to select one of these tools um, so this create a contour path for basic object let's click on the hair and just see what happens so it places a box around all the objects and seeing it's using using tool it's using the five millimeter end mill to actually use this and the direction it's going to be moving is a counterclockwise direction so if we look at our heights and depths I'm going to leave those as is for the time being I'm going to hit apply and see what it does so I can also hit OK and have a look at the operations at this point so let's put a contour operation in now the contour operation what that does actually cuts the contours of that object out so you can see that we've it's placed a contour around here our Maltese cross contour around the actual uh, lock wheel sorry the pin wheel and the lock wheel and you can see the movement that it's traveling in and to demonstrate what that looks like I'm gonna click up here and there is somewhere where is it there is a simulate this this one here simulate path G code on stock so if we jump to the simulate path G code on stock if I click on that what happens is that piece of uh, virtual stock has been placed down and we have this path simulation so I can hit play and you can actually see what actually happens so our five millimeter bit is being used to actually cut the individual um, objects from the stock now we got to remember here is that when this finishes these pieces of stock will no longer be attached to this sorry these these objects will no longer be attached to this stock which can cause a bit of an issue because what's going to happen is that right at the end this piece of stock will be cut through and all of a sudden this will be loose now unless you've glued the underside of this stock the whole lot of this stock and it's all anchored correctly these will just end up flying off somewhere and you'll end up either damaging yourself, your machine or you'll have a chunk taken out of the actual item itself so what we need to do is think about anchoring these to the actual underlying stock and we can do that with certain types of dress up to actually allow us to anchor these to the, the actual stock that means a little tab can be added in here to actually keep these attached to the original stock but also we need to look at the path operations and what order we do these path operations in and what's 
the best order to actually save time going back and forth and actually uh, dealing with certain things like holes and the amount of back and forth it does from back and forth it's going to, to the separate objects. Now, although this simulation is taking place, we can't actually see our drill bit in here or whereabouts it is. Um, I can use the alt key to move and see what's going on, see what's actually happening. We can see that our Maltese cross has been filled in there. That's our current simulation. So if we wait, oh, whoops, sorry, <laughs> the overseller sir. Let's just hit back on. Ugh. Ugh. I didn't know you could move that about. Ugh. Oh, it's all gone a bit squiffy. Right, let's go back to our front. So let's move up so we can see our drill bits in here and it's it's really low down so there is a reason for that is that I haven't set the length of that drill bit so I'm gonna okay this and stop the simulation first if I can cancel out of there and if you click OK our stock will be added to the um, the virtual stock will be added to the screen which we don't want um, we can go off and delete that stop but we'll, sometimes you end up with uh, layers and layers of stock if you don't delete it okay I'm in trouble seeing my tool in here so what I'm going to do is actually create the height of the tool slightly bigger than what I want but still keep the step downs and I'll show you what I mean in a minute so if you remember we set the tool to 10 mil? What did we send it to? Tool. Yeah, we set the tool to a height of 10 millimeter. Um, I got in there by double clicking the tool there. Go into tools. And there's a height of 10 millimeter. Now I'm going to change this to 100 millimeters. So our step down is based on our height. But this will not affect the current step down we've actually created at the moment. I'll show you what I mean, what step down is, and what on earth I'm talking about. So if I click OK, what will happen now if when I go to the simulation, which is uh, simulate path G code on stock, when I click on that, there's my tool now. So I can now see what my tool is doing. Still stepping down the amount of times. Now a step down means that for each complete pass it does, it steps down as num a, an amount, a millimetre amount or a centimetre or inch amount that you've placed. Um, and that's originally defaulted to the height of the cutting part of the tool, as we did earlier. Um, so now I've changed this height to 100 millimetres the cutting part was originally 10 millimeters so it would have stepped down 10 meters so this is passed as this completes out uh, the first pass the next part what will happen is the CNC machine or your mill will plunge the tool another 10 millimeters down and start cutting using that cutting face that tool it's the reason why we set our tool to the maximum level of the cutting face to start with um, because if you set that over you're going to cut with a piece that has no blade and therefore you're going to kill your results and cause unnecessary wear on your machine um, so what I've done is actually increase this by the tool by 100 millimeters to, well, to 100 millimeters so I can actually see my tool and I'm going to affect the actual cutting rate myself the actual uh, step down myself of the tool so to do that, I'm just going to stop this, stop, stop, or OK it. And I've clicked OK now, so you can see the stock is on screen. So this cut material here, I think we can just right click and delete that. Click on operations and click on contour. Now here you'll see something called step down. 
at the moment it's five millimeter step down. I thought that was set to ten mil. Huh. Anyway, so that's set to five millimeters. So see where I know it's highlighted here. It's greyed out, and that's because it's going to the opt tool diameter. So that's the option. So it's actually taking the tool diameter and using that as the amount of step down. So that is good. Obviously, you'll uh, set this to whatever you want. Now, I want to set this to 10 mil. So at the moment, it's stepping down 5 mil. I thought it was 10 mil before. So actually, I'm going to set this to 15. 15 millimeters step down. So the cutting face of my tool should be 15 millimeters. Um, but at the moment, to confuse things, I set to 100 millimeters so we can actually see what it's doing on screen. Confusing, yes. But you'll see where I'm going with this. So our step down is set to 5 millimeters at the moment. But I can't see, I just tried to change that from one, it's just affected my layout. So I can't actually change this at the moment. So the reason being is that I need to override this. Now, see this little icon here, little round icon that showed that it's, it's if I hover over this icon, saying that it's taking the optimal tool diameter, the operation tool diameter as its override, as its default. So if I click on here, this is where I can actually change it. So I'm going to change this to 15 millimeters. And before I do that, I just want to move this around and zoom in so you can see that this has gone down five millimeters at the moment. So when I change this to 15 millimeters, hit OK. Nothing's happened at the moment because I have to actually click off that field. And as you can see, now that step down is now two because this is a 30 millimeter height. So that's good. So that means that we can actually quickly see what our simulation will do. So if I OK this, yep, yeah, uh, so I can click on my job. Now I'm going to zoom out and put this in a nice at a nice jointy, ang jointy angle. Um, there we go. So that's all good. And I'm going to simulate my path and see what it does now. So we can now see our tool bit and we can see what it's doing. So it should go down twice, step down twice, and move to our next piece. Once it's finished doing our Maltese cross, you can see it's going right to the edge there because of our um, piece of stock has been placed on top of there. For clamping purposes, you may want to adjust this piece of stock. We'll go back to that in a mo. So as you can see, it's stepping out, so this should just be about finished now. Well, now I forgot where it started. Let's just wait a while. I'm very quiet. Come on, come on, you can do it. Come on, you can do it. Is it speed? No, I've got it. Yeah, I've got it to full speed here. So we'll just wait for that to actually finish our Maltese cross, and what will happen? It, see, it actually lifted. It moves over to this position here, and now it's creating our pinwheel. So. This green line is where is the actual travel of the tool bit, of of the actual rapid movements. So this is any movement that's above the actual piece, and what will happen on a CNC machine? It will use the rapid movement that's been set. So this will be much faster than any movement that's down here, and that's all set on the initial setup of your CNC machine. Um, a bit of trial and error, the rapid movement. Um, but in another video I'll go into that as well. So that's all been cut now. So you can actually see the pieces have been cut. Now I'm going to adjust the stock size 
because what I want is be able to clamp this stock. So I'm just going to OK that for the time being. I've left my stock on screen, so I'm going to actually leave that stock there because I want to actually change the the uh, stock size. Now to change the stock size, I'm going to jump into my job. Have a look, and it's going to work through. There we go. Our setup. So this is our setup at the moment. So we're using our ascending model bounds box, which is good. So if I change, so I'm looking to change the X and the Y. Right, 10 mil, so we can see 10 mil has been added on to the left here. And I'm going to stick 10 mil onto the right as well. So that's placed a 10 mil box outside of our stock, our current stock. So that's our current stock we had. So that's why I left it on the screen so we can see what we're doing. Um, so I'll, I want to put a clamp in here. So that should give me enough. I might actually stick 20 mil on that side. That's it, 20 mil on that side. I can adjust this side as well. So these are locked in with each other. I can this. So I can stick 30 mil on this side here, but I'm just going to stick. That'll do. That'll give me enough to clamp there. We have to put clamp in here as well, so that's good. So that's all good. I might need. Now my my CNC machine has got a a piece of board or piece of wood that actually this will butt up against and that may not clear that that may not be in the cutting zone because my piece of wood sit, sits here and I've got about an inch or so before I get into the cutting zone so I'm going to just bring this side up a bit as well oh no wrong side uh, why I'm going to stick that at uh, 40, stick 50 mil there, and I'm going to just bring that top side back down. So that looks good. That looks all good. OK that. And I'm going to leave my piece, that piece of stock there. Um, can I change the colour? So I'm going to change this the colour of the stock to a nice blue. So that's changed colour now. So I can so we can see what our stock will look like. Um, our new piece of stock will look like when I place it on place it on the, our simulation mode in a minute. So I'm going to just click on my job, and I'm going to do another simulation. You can see our new stock has been placed over the top of the old stock, which is bigger, which I like. And then we can go ahead with the simulation. That looks bleh. Bleh. There we go. Let's pick us out. Oh, I flipped it upside down. All right. There we go. So we can see the. Uh, Excuse me while I battle with this second. Right, I'll just leave it until it's processed. Am I safe now? Yes, I am safe now. Right, you can see it actually cutting the actual stock from our uh, our new stock, which is bigger than our blue, which we can just see sitting underneath there at the moment. And I'm just going to let this do two of the actual um, parts if I hit OK I'm just going to hit stop and OK now stop and OK that now so we've got our two pieces of stock it's been simulated on I'm going to make my old stock invisible 
and you can see sorry this is the so this is the old stock here we got a bit confused there you can see I've, I've cut right to the edge on here which I don't want I still want something less so I can actually clamp so I'm going to toggle the visibility of that and I'm going to bring in the previous simulation and now you can see that we've got an amount of stock that's that's left over so we can actually clamp not the most effective use of stock but it allows you to give show you shows you how to uh, able to clamp this stock okay so I'm gonna get rid of those two and I'm going to add something called a dress up to these to actually allow these to be still connected to the stock um, so they don't go flying off into space okay so to add a tag dress up on here to actually have holding tabs for each of these items you need to make sure that the contour is clicked on because if you click on anything else they will not apply because obviously to create a dress up you have to actually attach it to the con it's part of the contour that you're actually machining so it will leave a little tab to stop these from falling off your stock so click on contour and then go to path and path dress up now I'm going to click tag dress up and what will happen is that this will change and we can actually place in a tag in here that we'll, we need so I'm just going to zoom in slightly so we can see our model and get rid of the python window that's just appeared for some unknown reason so we've got our width, our height and our angle in there so I'm going to leave those as defaults we can play about with these ones to figure out how to do holding tags so I'm going to add it's got an X and Y there well there we go so we can actually move around our contour here and click where I want the actual tags to actually sit so I'm clicking on the using the bottom contour. Let's just move this up so we can see what we're doing. And I'm going to put one on. Do I want one on there? One on there. One round about the middle. I can move these. If I so wanted wanted to. No, I can't. I'll have to delete them first. And I'll stick one on there, one on there, and let's move this around using the alt key to move my my uh, model around. And I'm going to stick one on there as well. And one on there. So I'm happy with that might not be the best places to add dress ups on but it'll do for the time being I'm going to stick, stick one on here as well so I'm going to stick one at the top and one on the bottom come on there we go and I'm going to stick one there as well so I've, I've dressed that up in Three, three places for the circle. Um, normally, structure-wise, if you think of triangles, they're they're quite they're the uh, strongest structure that's out there. So, same as when you get a tripod. So, I'm just using three positions there, taking that theory of that's all I need. I don't really need four. This one I might have done a bit oversell us on but there is a lot of points that can actually can actually uh, break off so I'm just going to do the lock wheel now and let's have a look at the lock wheel didn't mean to press control there bring that down and I'm going to go and put 
on that. What about that? And what about there? So that's all good. Um, if I wanted to, to delete one, if I click on these, these will highlight where I've got these, all of them actually sitting here. I can actually see which ones are available by clicking on them. So if I just want, if I wanted to delete, say, uh, that one there, this one just here, unfortunately I can't click on it and it will appear over here, so I'll have to take a guess. That's number zero, so I can actually uncheck that so that's gone so once I'm happy with all that I can hit save and apply to that and we'll go to there oh, that's gone and click OK we'll just wait for that to calculate so now our dress ups have added and if we look around our contour we can actually excuse me we can actually see um, the places where they've been added in so those should keep our piece attached to the stock so now we can simulate this again simulate G path Let's zoom out there we go Right, let's see what it does. So we can see that the material that's been left that holds these in place. So this will hold our Maltese cross that piece of material there. And I'm trying to zoom in. So you can see zooming in, there's the material. So that's how to do dress ups to allow for these items to be kept in place. Now, there is one thing that's missing stop this okay that so we can see that the holes aren't actually in our pieces of material so that's the uh, the next thing we're going to do so I'm going to get rid of our material and look at producing these holes in here